Imagine a microprocessor is like a human brain. It's very powerful and is capable of doing a lot of things. But without a human body, it cannot see, move, or do any kind of work. Now, picture a microcontroller as a complete human body. It has brain, the eyes, hands, and the muscles all in one system. It can sense things, make decisions, and take action all by itself. I will explain to you clearly. Have you ever opened up a robot or a smart gadget and wonder who is actually running the show inside? I mean, who does all the decision making, all the thinking? The chances are there is most probably a microprocessor or a microcontroller. They might sound similar and both of them are small chips packed with intelligence, but they are designed for entirely different purposes. Understanding the difference between microcontroller and microprocessor is very crucial if you are really into robotics and electronics. So in this video, we'll be breaking down microcontroller and microprocessor and we'll be explaining the difference between both of them in an easy to understand manner. So make sure you watch the video till the end. If you have any doubts, make sure you ask it in the comments down below. And if you are really into electronics and robotics, make sure you check out our channel. You will love it. So many people have been asking me, why do we need to have this kind of complex microcontrollers and microprocessors when we have simple electronic components like resistors, capacitors, diodes, transistors, and all these kind of things. So the thing is, simple electronics can detect signals or perform actions, but they can't think or decide. They don't have the logic or memory to store the data, process them, or make smart decisions. That's why we need a brain in our electronics and robotics projects. And that's where the microcontroller and microprocessor comes into play. So what exactly is a microprocessor? A microprocessor is the brain of a computer. It's a high performance chip that performs complex calculations, runs operating systems, and handles multiple tasks at lightning speed. However, a microprocessor cannot work alone. It needs an external memory, RAM or ROM, input and output devices, and peripherals to form a complete system. You can think of it like a CEO. CEO is extremely smart, but he needs an actual team in order to do any kind of useful work. But where do we find it? You will find microprocessors in laptops, mobile phones, gaming consoles, etc. Now, what exactly is a microcontroller? A microcontroller, on the other hand, is like a complete mini computer on a single chip. It includes a processor, memory, timers, and input and output pins all integrated into one compact package. This makes microcontroller perfect for controlling devices like robotic arm, washing machine, digital thermometers, and other Arduino projects. Popular microcontrollers include the Atmega328 that is commonly used in Arduino Uno, ESP32, STM32, and PIC series. They are cost efficient, energy efficient, and easy to program, ideal for students, hobbyists, and embedded developers. But whether you are using microcontroller or microprocessor, one thing is always true. You will always need a circuit to help it interact with the real world. Sensors, motors, displays, they all connect through your circuit. And if that circuit isn't designed well, even the smartest chip can fail. Speaking of circuit design, let me introduce you to the sponsor of this video, Altium PCB Designer. If you watch our videos, you know we use a tool called Altium for most of our robotics projects to draw our circuits and design our own PCBs. It's easy to create our own PCBs using Altium. And if you're a DIY electronics enthusiast, you're going to love it. An Altium subscription includes something called Altium 365, which lets you design, share, and manufacture your project everything in one place. You can even collaborate on your circuit with friends and share real-time feedback. So if you want to check it out, the link is in the description so you can download and try it for yourself. In terms of raw power and performance, microprocessors are much more stronger than microcontrollers. They run faster, handle multitasking better, and can run operating systems like Windows, Linux, etc. Microcontrollers, on the other hand, are built for control, speed, and specific purpose and not multitasking and complex tasks. They are optimized to interact with hardware, take sensor inputs, and control outputs, all while using very little power. So if you need a chip that can browse the internet, run an operating system, stream video, or run games, you need to go with microprocessor. But if you need a chip that controls a motor, blinks an LED, or reads temperature, the microcontroller is your best choice. So you might be wondering, 
If a microcontroller has processor, memory and everything, why not use it inside a computer instead of a microcontroller? The answer is, they are not powerful enough for PC level tasks. The microcontroller lacks the speed, memory and architecture needed to run complex software, support graphical displays or handle multitasking environment. They are perfect for simple repetitive control and not for general computing. Now, with this information, can you answer one question? Why a microprocessor is not used in general robots or electronic projects? Let me know your answer in the comments down below. Now, let's take a look at some of real world examples. Building a robot car that follows a line, we use a microcontroller like Audio. Creating a smart home device that turns on light when a motion is detected, again, we will use a microcontroller. But when we are developing a video editing workstation or a gaming laptop, you will need to use a microprocessor. Making a smartwatch, you might actually use both. We can use a microcontroller for sensors and a small microprocessor for display and communication. Yes, there are scenarios where we'll be using both microcontroller and microprocessors together. So, in conclusion, if your project needs to control hardware, run on low power, and do one task really well, go with a microcontroller. If your project needs to process data, run complex software, or handle multiple tasks, you can choose a microprocessor. If you find this video useful, make sure to give this video a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel.